Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's video, I'm going to show you why you must pay special attention to these two lines, the yellow line and the blue line. Two months ago, I did this video here called the Mother of Golden Crosses Confirms the End of the Bear Market. And not many people believed me. And this was the cross I was talking about on the weekly chart. And now I'm going to show you another cross, which is the final nail in the coffin for all the bears out there. I'll have a quick look at the 60 day cycle and how it's actually playing out as perfectly as you would expect after a bear market bottom over here and the following cycles becoming right translated. So we'll have a look at that to show us exactly where we are, where we're about to top off, and where we're heading in the next few days and weeks. Quite a few people have been asking me about what we do with the Bitcoin Miners Club that we have here on the channel. I'm going to give you an insight of what we've done in the last six weeks that we started this club and why you really need to come on board with the Bitcoin Miners Club if you don't want to miss out on the potential out there. So if that sounds interesting, then get yourself a cup of tea. You've just got to relax, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. Before we begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. Nothing should be taken as financial advice. So please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions. Okay, so we're going to start off with this weekly chart of the Bitcoin price. I want you to pay a special attention to this yellow line and this blue line. And that's based on the pattern over here. When we came up here at the end of 2021 and created a top at 64,000 and the double top at 69,000, what we found with this pattern is that this is a head and shoulders pattern. And that usually plays to the downside, of course. And this pattern played out absolutely perfectly because as expected, it broke down over here. And if we take the measure, of the fall from the top of this 69,000 to the neckline at this yellow line over here, it's around 50%. So in classical charting, a head and shoulders pattern with this range will also create the same range when it breaks out from the neckline over here. And if we measure from that neckline to the fall that we had up to the 17,500, that was 54%. So virtually the exact same fall from the top over here to the yellow line was the same fall from the neckline to the bottom here. And this was one of the reasons why most people thought, including myself, that this bottom was in at 17,500. However, the FTX scandal which broke over here brought this red line much further down to the 15,400. So that's the background of this pattern. And this is why this is important because on the weekly chart, if you take this pattern it's going to play out one more time, this time on this side of the chart here. There's actually two ways to draw this. First one, the yellow line, as you can see, is from the bodies of the candle over here, 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 and here. That would give us one price at this side of the chart. And the blue line here is measured from the wicks of those candles that came down with a strong support all along here and over here. When the market broke down over here and then found resistance before it fell properly in a waterfall. So the prices to look out for when we come up to those lines, the blue and the yellow lines, whenever we hit this price over here, that will be one of your big resistance points along the way here. So the first one, if we hit it this week or this weekend, that price would come up to around about 35 and a half thousand. And and that level on the yellow line is at around about 48,000. Obviously, there's a very low chance that it's going to hit those lines this week. However, we know that there is a lot of cluster of support at the bottom of these candles over here, and a lot of support and resistance at this point, as well as over here. So if we put a ray across this support and resistance, it gives us some sort of a ballpark figure of where this price action may hit this blue line first. 
and that's going to be around about the June time over here at around 36,000 and it would appear to me that with the confluence of the support and resistance along the blue line that we would have a strong level of resistance and a correction at this point somewhere around there so keep an eye on this actual blue line and draw it on your charts as well and the second line the yellow line over here Obviously, it's going to hit that further along. And once again, if we do another ray over here, to take into account the tops over here as resistance, resistance, and then a lot of support along this line here. And this is at 50,000. So somewhere along the line here, it may actually come up to this level around 50,000. And that would be around the middle of June this year. So maybe after this, there may be a big spurt up or maybe this line could be drawn a little bit further up. So the yellow line goes further out towards the end of the 2023. So keep an eye on these two extremely strong resistance lines along the way over here. And of course, they would provide two very good opportunities. And as I've said many times in my videos, I'm mostly a long-term investor but I will be looking at some strategic points to take some of the percentages of that long-term portfolio off the table with a view to buying back a little bit lower. And these two points would provide further opportunities along the way based on some very strong support and resistance points all along here. Okay, so two months ago, I actually did this video when we were really towards the bottom of the market over here at 15,400 and the market was just about to start moving up and I'd been saying to people on many many occasions around this here that with a very high degree of probability that we have bottomed out at these levels at 15.4 and that with these averages here on the weekly chart we were seeing this cross of the 8 EMA the blue line crossing the 21 EMA the yellow line and that this was the start of the mark for the end of the bull market. This was the chart at that point. This is where we were when the 8 EMA was crossing the 21. And look what's happened since then. The 8 EMA has also crossed the 34 EMA, the white line over here. And as soon as it did that, look what happened. We got a big Marabozu candle on the weekly chart. But what's important to note now is that the 21 simple moving average is about to cross the white line, the 34 simple moving average here. And why is this important? Well, this actually confirms this cross, which confirmed the end of the bear market based on the historical context. So this is in the first cycle, the first mini bear market that we got back in 2012 shows here that after these averages got mangled up over here, when they realigned each other, over here when the 8 crossed over the 21 the yellow line that alignment over here actually led to this big bull market so what happened here at the bottom of the bear market did these averages do the same let's have a closer look here so the first sign is the 8 EMA crossing over the 21 that confirms the end of the bear market then the 21 going above the 34 which further confirms the end of the bear market down here and this leads to the same alignment the 8 the 21 and the 34 and the start of the new bull market so the alignment is extremely crucial to confirming the end of the previous bear market so let's have a look what's happening now so we've had this 8 cross over the 21 and now we're on the verge of the 21 crossing over the 34 so what we will now have very shortly at the end of this week will be the 8 the 21 and the 34 all in alignment, giving us a clear pathway towards the next top of this current bull market that we're in now. So now what we've got with this cross of the 21 above the 34, which is imminent this week, is the full alignment of the 8, the 21 and the 34, all lining up to give us a big increase for the next two to three years. Okay, so moving on to the 60 day cycle, this is the chart with the cluster and the resistant point at this 30,000 to 32,000, which I've been talking about for many months as we've been going up on this rally here. So we're getting closer and closer to this resistant point and we'll have a closer look at this in the context of the 60 day cycle. As I mentioned in the last week's video, this rally over here has been consolidating at a higher level at this point in the top third rather than the middle third or the bottom third. And that usually is a sign 
that the market wants to go much further up. And I mentioned in the last video as well, as well as the previous videos, that once we get past the midpoint of this current cycle, so this is the current cycle from this red line here to this red line, and this white dotted line is the midpoint. If I take this one out, it makes it easier to have a look at. So as we know, when we've bottomed out, the cycles always play out becoming a right translated cycle. Like for instance, this one in the previous cycle, before the midpoint here, we made a high, and then after the midpoint, we made a higher high. And that was a good sign that we topped out at this neckline over here for the end of the 60-day cycle low down here, where we just started the new cycle around 10th of March. And since then, we've been on this big rally all the way to the current price of around 30,700. And once again, the midpoint of this current cycle, we made a higher high so far. And it looks to me with a high degree of probability that this neckline just here at the 30,000 to 32,000, and I've been mentioning that figure all the way along here that we showed once we get above the 25,200 level, that we should quickly move towards the next resistant point at the 30 to 32,000 over here. So that's exactly what it's done. So I would say with a high degree of probability that we're about to top off for a correction anywhere in this region over here over the next few days. And this should be followed by a 60 day low into the cycle to come back to this point here around the 9th of May, which would be the start of the next cycle on the upside. So please always remember that when we do top out at these resistant points, these falls in the 60 day cycle are designed to shake people out of the market before they go for the next rally. So this will be designed to shake the weak hands out of the market down here. So if people are wanting to actually take something off the table because they need some money or whatever, for whatever reason, then this would be the point to take some off the table rather than come down to here with all the pressure of seeing your portfolio go down and then to actually sell out at exactly the wrong point which is usually going to be the start of the next cycle. So if anybody is thinking of doing that, this would be the point to take some off the table, not at this point over here. If you've been following me on Twitter, you'll know that over the last few days, especially, I've been talking about quite a few bearish factors that have been actually creeping into the Bitcoin price. On this one here, I was trying to show the actual volume that as the price has been going up with all these pumps, but they're not reflected in the actual volume with the Bitcoin price. And that is usually a sign that we're about to top out. And further down, if we have a look at this, signs of indecision, once again, that's usually found at the top of a rally before the market starts to come down. And further down, I showed this triple divergence on the OBV, the on balance volume. This is an incredibly powerful indicator that when we have so much divergence, Double divergence is quite common, but triple divergence is very, very rare. And it's very rare to get anything more than a triple divergence, i.e. a quadruple divergence is not even heard of. So once again, there's a lot of bearishness coming into the market. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, all you have to do is to click on the Twitter link below all of my videos. So currently, we're on day 35 in this cycle. So we've gone past the 30-day cycle midpoint, and in a bull market, it's very common to actually top out on, after the midpoint around the day 40, give or take five days either side. So we're just in the realms of the right period of time to be topping out in this period here with a quick move to the downside. That could be anywhere around here at this point at 26 and a half or at this neckline over here at 25 two. So these two would be the most appropriate points for the correction to come down to. I want to mention a quick word about our private Bitcoin miners club on this channel. Quite a few people keep asking about what we actually cover, what we do, etc., etc. It's just over a month now since we started this private Bitcoin miners club. And so far, this is what we've covered on the miners club so far on the videos that we do every Wednesday. And I mentioned in the Twitter page yesterday that since we started the miners club on the 1st of March, Bitcoin has actually gone up 28%. And in the Bitcoin Miners Club, I've featured five special featured miners with high potential for the next two to three years. And these that I've covered have actually averaged over 80% plus so far 
since actually I covered them. And I've gone on to say that the leverage play, which is the reason why we actually created this miners club, and this hasn't actually even started properly yet, and we're already 80% up on just the ones I've featured. And some of them, like Cypher, from the bottom of the actual bear market, is over 500 to 600% higher today than it was at the end of December. So apart from actually covering some special features on high potential growth companies for the next two to three years, I also highlight some of the swing trade opportunities that actually cr are created within the Bitcoin miners companies. So since we started, these are the actual trades that I actually brought to people's attentions. And these are the trades that I've taken myself. So as you can see, we've taken trades on Marathon, Cypher, Stronghold, Marathon again, one more time, Hut8 and Bitfarms. Most of the swing trades will be on Marathon and Cypher mining because they're quite volatile and they move very, very quickly. So there's a very good opportunity to take profits in a short period of time. And so far in the month of March, we've had six trades. One of them is still live because we haven't reached our target price of 240 on the Hut8. But the rest of them, as you can see, within a month, we've had a 37%, 42%, 40%, 22%, and a 34% profit. So, so far, we've had all successful trades. None of them have actually broken down below the stop loss. And the third thing I do in the Bitcoin Miners Club on the videos that we do on a Wednesday is actually cover the normal technical analysis that I do for Bitcoin over here on Monday and Friday. I do the same thing for the Bitcoin miner companies. So if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in and you want to become a Bitcoin Miners Club member, then the cost is $4.99 per month. For that, you get one exclusive members video each week on a Wednesday. And there is absolutely no obligation, no contract, and you can cancel at any time hassle-free. So this Wednesday, I'm actually going to be covering something quite special for the Bitcoin Miners Club members, because it's something that I've discovered in the charts, which gives a very high degree of probability of when to actually exit the Bitcoin miners, when to get back on board after that correction, and what to then expect after that, all based on the historical Bitcoin chart fractal patterns from previous cycles, which are repeating in this cycle as well. So that's something to really look forward to this Wednesday. Okay, so we'll wrap it up there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and subscribe and to turn on the notification bell. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>